One of the necessities for the early settlers to exist was the need for mills. Our township was noted for its nine working mills. There were grist mills to grind the wheat, corn, rye, or barley into feed for their animals, and also for grinding the grain finely into flour. The sawmills were needed for sawing their trees into lumber for building purposes. The fulling mills were needed to make their sheep's wool into cloth for clothing and blankets. Manalapan had the availability of good mill sites because of its three feeder streams. Several of our mills operated well into the 1900s. The Millhurst Mill was operating as early as 1778. This mill is the only mill left in our township and it also should be saved. This is the Taylor Mill, which served both as a grain mill and a sawmill. This is the mill for which the school and the road are named. This millstone is placed in front of the Taylor Mill School, located on Gordon's Corner Road. Naturally, the earliest concentrations of population occurred around these mill sites. These early villages provided essential services as well as a sense of community for the new settlers. An early map of 1873 lists 28 businesses. There were farmers, millers, carpenters, horse and buggy dealers, blacksmiths, wheelwrights, and distillers. We had several distilleries because of our many apple orchards, and at that time, distilling was very legal. As I mentioned, a major event in Manalpan's history took place on June 28, 1778, during the American Revolution. During the early 1960s, New Jersey began acquiring farms located on the battle sites in Manalapan and Freehold Townships. The date of June 28, 1978 marked the 200th anniversary of the Battle of Mammoth, and on that date the Visitor Center was dedicated. The Mammoth Battlefield State Park now consists of 1,520 acres. On that 200th anniversary, 50,000 people were there to watch a reenactment of the battle by some 2,000 American and British reenactor troops. This reenactment has continued every year near that weekend date and can be witnessed from the Visitor Center located off Route 33 near Wemrock Road. One of the most often told stories of the battle is the story of Molly Pitcher, pictured here by a Courier Knives print. It is based on the heroism of Mary Ludwig Hayes, the wife of a gunner in the Pennsylvania Artillery Regiment. During the battle, Molly helped work a cannon on the hill east of Old Tenet Church. She also fetched water for the cannon and filled soldiers' canteens. The validity of this event is recorded in two soldiers' diaries. Mary is buried in her hometown of Carlisle, Pennsylvania. This is a picture in the 1900s of what was once thought to be the spot where she got water. However, that was incorrect, as the well was erected by the Pennsylvania Railroad for the benefit of seeing a marker from the train. It has now been authenticated that she carried the water from the spring just west of her husband's gun position. A viewing platform has been constructed overlooking that spring. A trail to this overlook 
begins at the Battlefield Office parking lot on Route 522, just east of the Tenet Cemetery. The battle took place near the surrounding grounds of the old Tenet Church. various sections of the township, a tavern was located. Before public buildings were available, our town meetings, our courts were held in taverns. Licenses and references were needed to be an innkeeper. The person was required to have at least two spare beds and provisions for the horses. Through the efforts of the Battleground Historical Society, the last remaining tavern, the Village Inn, located in Englishtown, was saved from demolition. The village inn was renovated to its early use as a tavern by the society and now serves as a tavern museum. Everyone is welcome to visit this historic site. Manalpin's first schools were private institutions. When the state started the establishment of schools, our township had nine one-room schools. These were scattered over the township since there was no means of transporting students. This is a picture of the former Thompson Grove School on Route 537. Only one of these one-room schools remains. It's in Tenet, but it is converted to a home. These very old schools needed updating. Therefore, in 1909, a new two-story, 20-room school was built on Main Street in Englishtown. I was lucky. I was the first in my family to attend this modern brick school. As our population grew, more and more schools were needed. Today, we have eight schools and a regional high school. I am happy to report that the Board of Education decided to name the schools after our mills at Brooks. That decision was made because of the prominence of our prosperous mills back in our beginnings. I have given you just a sample of Manalpin's rich history. In the future, I plan to give you a more detailed documentary about different aspects of the living history in Manalapan. Please drop by the Village Inn during one of our tour dates to pick up one or two of our books and learn more about our historic town and township. This is Lydia Wyckoff, and I hope to see you soon. Mm -hmm.